After nearly a year with this, the mighty Nordic Track 27i, here are my top 10 tips for using this bike. And even if you're an experienced rider, I think you'll find some things in this video that you really didn't know. Let's get cracking. First, a quick pre-tip tip. tip. If like most people, you don't use the weights, these actually make really good shoe hangers. It's important to keep the place tidy. So tip number one, if you're doing off the bike workouts, you can just turn the screen around like this, but look what happens. It's not straight, is it? So if this happens to you and you want a straight screen when you're working out off the bike, all you need to do is use the incline button to lift the bike up until the screen's straight. Next is headphone connection, especially if you use these. So if you're an Apple AirPod user, you'll probably know already, already that they don't often play that well with Android devices. And there's also the auto connect feature. So there's several pieces of equipment in here and these will auto connect to my phone first. I have to disconnect them, try and connect, you know the story. So because I've got several things in this gym, I just bought some less than $20 headphones from Amazon. These have got 4.5 stars, they're less than $20, and each piece of equipment in here has its own dedicated set of headphones, and that means as soon as I open this box, they auto connect to this device. I don't even know what the brand is, but I just picked the best ones with the highest rating under $20, and they just connect straight away. My next tip is scheduling workouts. So when you first come into the screen here, it will offer you lots of workouts that are featured now, the latest from iFit, rides that it suggests for you, there's a lot of content on here and you might find that you want to do more than one workout um, but you, you, you're going to pick one but you don't want to lose the other one because you want to do that next time you're on the bike. Let me show you how to schedule a workout. I'm going to do this one today. This one's suggested for me but I quite fancy this one. So I'm going to schedule that one for later on. Today's Tuesday. I'm going to hit the schedule button and I'm going to do that one on Friday, Saturday when I'm next on the bike. So that one's scheduled for me. I can then go back into this one and then do this one as I would have done normally. And then when I get on the bike Saturday, the other workout will be waiting for me. Even if I don't get on the bike till Sunday or Monday, it'll still be there queued. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you're thinking about buying a Nordic Track S27i or any other piece of Nordic Track equipment, please use the link in the description. It will take you to the best price on Nordic Track's website and it also helps support the channel. So thanks very much. Next is dark mode. There's a lot of white on this screen, which might get a bit much for you sometimes. So just click the three lines there at the top and then click on appearance and then you can change it from light mode to dark mode. That will then reset the machine and then you've got dark mode here instead of light mode. I actually think this looks a little bit better. Next is the seat. So after 400 plus Peloton rides, I thought I'd have no trouble getting used to this. <laughs> it's just so hard and uncomfortable. I now keep it under my bed, just in case we get an intruder. It's just, I don't know, of all the fitness bikes I've ridden, this is probably the most uncomfortable seat. So I've just swapped it out for a $20 gel seat from Amazon, and I just put in gel bike seat. These are standard bike seats, so you can just buy a mountain bike seat like this one and swap it out for this. This is a lot more comfortable. After 100 rides though, it does look like this, so it, does, it doesn't wear quite as well, but it's still just as comfortable. And you can see that these are different brands, but they are the same seat. So just go for the cheapest version with the best rating. Next is cycling shoes. These bikes come with an SPD clip on one side and then cages on the other. This is really handy because if you're a whole family using the bike, you don't need to buy multiple cycling shoes. However, if you're the main user of the bike, I recommend getting yourself some shoes like this. These are Nike Super Reps. Sometimes uh, they're cheaper on the Nike website, sometimes they're cheaper on Amazon, but they're really breathable. They've got good flexibility and they give you a really good connection with the bike when you're cycling, much better than the cages do. Next is membership. When you buy one of these bikes, you'll automatically get a 30-day iFit membership trial and then that will switch over into their $40 a month membership plan. That's okay, but my recommendation would be don't do that. <laughs> Instead, go to the iFit.com website, and iFit is the software that runs on these bikes. And if you're a single rider, then just go for a single membership, which will be less than half the price, quite a bit less than half the price um, for an annual membership or if you want to pay monthly, it's still less than half the price. And if you're a family like we are, 
I buy my membership annually and I buy it in the, the Black Friday sale and it was 250 for the year. So that's about $20 a month. Next is picture quality. So these screens are 1080p and the workouts, the outdoor workouts are filmed in kind of like real life, real time locations. So occasionally the picture quality can drop momentarily if they're going down a mountain, for instance. But what you may find is the whole workout isn't the best picture quality. And, and generally the reason for that is because it's one of their older workouts. So the workouts they filmed in the last sort of couple of years going backwards, these are generally good, quite good picture quality, but the older ones, it can suffer slightly. Let me show you what I mean. So with these workouts, for instance, which are excellent, and I would actually say just put up with the picture quality. So you can see when this workout starts, now quite often they are a little bit grainy when the workouts start, I think it's a buffering thing, but you may be able to see that it's not the most amazing quality, it's kind of just okay. And the reason for that is that this is one of their slightly older workouts, and the way to tell the age of a workout is when the map comes up. Because when they show a map of the route, you'll see the date on the map, or you can just pick the latest from iFit, and generally these are made up, even though some of them are compilations, from their latest workouts. Next is Smart Adjust. So if you're a beginner, for instance, you may think that you just need to stick to the beginner workouts, but if you switch on Smart Adjust down here, this will modify the workout to suit you. So if this is too hard, you'd lower it down a bit and it will carry on throughout the whole workout. Next is auto fan. So rather than adjust the fan manually, if you press down like this, it puts it into auto. Now the fan's not on because I'm not pedaling, but as soon as I start pedaling, you'll find the fan will kick in and it will be blowing about as hard as I'm pedaling. It's genius. Next is the delete a workout button. So this workout, I don't wanna save it because I actually wanna do this workout. If I press finish, then it will assume that I've done it and I've had enough from it. But if you wanna do it again, say you got disturbed halfway through, you can just delete the workout and then it will just delete it. And then next time you go in to the main screen, it will be recommended for you again. Another thing I really like is for say more leisurely rides, you might wanna to listen to a podcast uh, or some other music. So you can turn the music right down, but you can put on closed captions. So you can have an, uh, your own music playing or, or, not, or uh, a podcast playing, and then you'll still get the instruction through the screen here, and then they'll give you a target RPM. So I know that I should be at about 80 RPMs, and I can see what I should be doing in this workout because of the closed captions. And that's that. I think there was about 12 tips there, or 13, but close enough. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and until next time, see you soon.